everyone. Welcome to our English Top Global Seminar. I'll be your host for today, Diamond Master Daniel. And so just when, I just want to say hello to everyone. Let's just give a uh, wave, say hello, everyone. Yes, thank you all for joining. And so today we do not have our Quranic translator. Uh, so please, uh, just you can just listen in from the uh, main channel. And so once again, uh, it's another great week to start off our Atomy business. And so before we begin, we'll start with our company motto. And so if you can follow along. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Let's begin. Cherish the Cherish spirit, the spirit, create the create vision, the vision follow, follow the faith, faith serve in humility. humility. Aja, 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 aja. 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 And so today we have a very special guest speaker who uh, is going to be speaking for us today. And so uh, before we welcome them, I'd just like to say that you know now it is the first uh, week of April and now we're beginning another uh, month with a now it's close to spring. And so the weather is getting warmer. I hope that it's a great uh, opportunity for you to go out there and meet your partners in person. Uh, before it might have been too cold to meet them, but now um, you know there's no really excuse for you anymore. And for the only person that's holding you back is yourself, right? So let's uh, do our best to uh, make sure that we uh, become true to who we want to be and do the best we can in this Atomy business. And so today we have a special lecture uh, from our uh, Royal Master. And so he's going to give a little bit more of a continuation of the last month's lecture. So if you did not see the last month's lecture, uh, you can go back into the YouTube channel and watch it again. So please uh, do that because it's very informative. Uh, he covers a lot of things that he's done personally uh, to grow to where he is. And I think it's something that we can all watch and learn from. And so today is the second half and there is going to be a, a third half later on but we'll be going into that. So we can just give a big uh, round of applause for our Royal Master, uh, Seo Jae-young. Hello everyone. It's great to see you today. It's the second uh, lesson. And I am your Royal Master, Seo Jae-young. Nice to meet you all. And so there's a lot of uh, sakura blooming in Korea right now. And so it's a great time. And spring is coming and a lot of spring weather. And now that COVID is slowly ending, and so I think it's a great time for us to begin our Atomy business. And so today I'll be doing the continuation of the uh, success system. And so last week, uh, last month, I talked about the dreams and goals. And we talked about loving the product. And so today we're going to go a little bit deeper into attending the meeting and so forth. And so the first lesson will be session three about attending meetings and about uh, building your core habits. And so when we talk about the core habits for success, we talk about attending meetings. And that is the key. And so in Adami's business, we say that, oh, we're going to work diligently. And if someone says that, then what do we need to do? Then this is what I want to advise. Do meetings. Do a lot of meetings. And so when we're doing Adami, uh, diligently, then we start with a meeting and end with a meeting. And so I'm going to uh, kind of dive deeper into that a bit later. And so this is a running a marathon together. And by doing this meeting over and over again, we build teamwork 
because it's where we meet people. And by doing the meeting, we can be plugged into the system. And so just like we are a rice cooker, we need to be connected to the plug in the wall in order to feel charged and heat up the rice. Or if we are a refrigerator, we need to have it plugged in so that the refrigerator can continue to stay cool. And just like that, when we attend the meeting, we get plugged in, filled with energy from attending the meeting. And so if this plug-in part of the business is very uh, lackluster and it's going on and off, you have it plugged in one moment, you take it out another, then it's going to have a lot of issues. And so just like that, when we try to cook rice, then we plug it in and then take it out, plug it in and take it out, then it will impact that rice being cooked. Just like that, if we plug it in and then plug into the system and then uh, unplug it, then we will not be able to build the right system and build the right business. And it has to be plugged in right from the very beginning. And you attend the meetings to change yourself so that way once you're changed, then can you help your partners to become changed and then they do the same thing. And so once the partner gets invited and they get changed, that's how you're able to increase your network. And so the meeting place is a gas station for our business owners, right? It's a healing camp. So just like how we have a success academy once a month, right, or seminars once a week. And when we do this, we will get a lot of rejections or, you know, there's going to be times where people are not going to be interested in that. But when we go to this big meeting camps, this is where we'll feel recharged and feel healed from all the rejection we felt in the prior weeks. And from there, we can gain strength and go back. And so just like how a gas, a car is empty without gas, we need to have a field in the gas station. We need to feel healed and fueled to uh, receive passion and energy again to work again. And so there's people that say that, oh, I don't want to attend the meeting until after I find a partner. But that means that this is not how the business will work. And so if you attend the meeting after you find a partner, then you'll never find anyone. Because you need to come out first and become the chicken so that you can lay the egg, right? You can't be the chicken without, uh, if you want to just lay the egg first, and then become a chicken after, right? You need to grow from becoming a small chick into a chicken so that you can give uh, birth to the egg. And so don't try to skip those steps. And so once you become more uh, involved in the seminars and the meetings, and then you learn, then you are going to be prepared to create that partner. And sponsors are required to attend meetings attended by their partners, especially those that you've recommended to your partners. So you can either be the sponsor, you could be the partner. And so you might be as a sponsor, I've listened to everything.
Yeah, but you can't just say that, oh, uh, you can just go by yourself. And so in this uh, business, I mean, it's the same as a soccer team, right? If you have one person missing from a soccer team, your entire team will break down. You can't win. And so just like that, you need to be plugged in and you need to work together with your sponsors. And so if you're inconsistent with attending meetings, you become a person others can't trust. And so if you promise to attend the meeting, but then you start to make excuses, then it will be very difficult to do a business with that kind of person. And so during the meeting, there's someone who's just looking at their phone and not focused. And so it's not about just attending the meeting that's important, but you need to also be focused in the meeting so that you can learn something. That is the kind of uh, posture and attitude that you need to have. But then some people, there's like, oh, I've attended, so I've done my work and I'm not gonna pay attention. Then that is the already a person that is on the road to failure. And so during this time when you're at a seminar, it might be very long, but you feel uh, exhausted, so you leave, and so you just kind of walk around outside, or you take out the partners and have them talk together, chatting outside when they're listening diligently. Or like they start to consult outside, right outside the seminar. And that's a big no-no. Because you've come to a, such a big seminar, and they're listening diligently. And they're there with the most top quality seminar uh, lecturers. But you there are trying to think that you can do a much better job than these amazing people. Then it's such a foolish thing. And such a waste of time. And so there's many people who uh, invited these people, but they didn't come. And so they, they would talk and like say all these things, uh, kind of updating people. It's like, oh, today this seminar, uh, this lecturer came and that, oh, they're talking about this right now. And so then how they look at you, they're like, oh, instead of paying attention to the seminar, they're here just talking in the group chat while they're at the seminar. And so no matter how much we will try to convey it with words, they'll never be able to experience the energy that's there at the seminar. And so don't start talking about the, the lecture or what they're wearing, the clothes, and start to judge them or all oh, their lecture is not very good and start to bother the people around you, then that is a, a going to give a very big negative impact to those around. And so the, the lecture is finished at the seminar. And this is a very important part. You need to say good, positive things. And so there's someone, they always talk negatively uh, about the seminar every time they're there. They would always complain and have something negative to talk about. And it was, everything was unsatisfying. Even though the seminar was good, they like, oh, the today seminar was good, but the lecture at the end, oh, it was so not good or unprofessional or whatever. They, or what kind of neck, why are they wearing that kind of clothes? And they would start to complain or judge them. And do you think that person had a good business? No.
And so we saw the uh, reactions of those around him. And, and many people were like, oh, we had such a good time. So how come this person is complaining? And so even if you have something that you're not satisfied about, if you have at least one thing that you felt that was really good, then you should focus on that point. Then everyone around you, when you mention that, they'll also relate. But if you start to talk about the negative things, then all the people will only think about the negative things and then it will just cause a, a bad outcome. And so don't talk about negative things, only talk about the good things. And so the essence of Adamie's business is that we have to consume, we have to distribute, and then we have to educate. This is the kind of business Adamie is. And we do this through the success system to duplicate it. And so we duplicate through this human relationship business. Right. What do they need to do? Right. The goals, the dreams, the how do we need to do it? is through the organization, right? Through the organization, we uh, consume, we distribute, and then we educate. And so we have a big uh, emphasis on organization uh, from the how aspect of the business. And that's why we're able to do this globally. And so without an organization, you have to do all three of this by yourself. And so they're those ones that go out there to do their own business. You know, people who are doing insurance, they have to take the responsibility, meet people by themselves and expand their business by themselves. But because we are an organization, we work together as a team. And in order to utilize that, we need to attend the meetings. And so by missing the meetings, you cannot build your uh, business. And so it's not about the ability, it's the system. And so the power of the world equals power to manage, right? You need to have abilities, right? You need to have education, you need to have luck, you need to have money. And that's the, the abilities and the power of the world. But Adam's power is patience to follow the system. And so if you don't have uh, the kind of trust about the system or the system or your sponsor, then it can be very difficult to be patient all the way to the end. It's like, oh, you start to question, like, should we be meeting as a, doing this meeting, even though it's so difficult? Why should we come to the center? Or they'd always complain. And then they start to end up doing it your, their way because they can't be patient and follow the system. And so once they have that confidence that this direction is the correct direction, then they'll start to follow the system. And so you need to understand this direction so you don't get confused. And so I hope that you all are able to set your directions using this guidebook. And so there's different kinds of meeting types. So there's one-on-one -on -one meetings. And so you meet with your personal connections, uh, you know, people you know, uh, like your relatives, your friends. And so it's very important about the location that we choose when we meet people.
And so the perfect place is that you can show all about atomy, and the best place will be the center. And sometimes it can be difficult to meet at the center. And so if you have a far center in like Canada or US, then even your own house is green. And so even for myself, I use my house often. In one on one meetings in my own house. And then from there, we'd invite them to the center afterwards. And so this depends on your situation, obviously. And so if you try to do this business meeting in coffee shops or uh, restaurants, it can be hard to develop into a business meeting. And you might not have a very good positive result because it's noisy there and you know it's very distracting. And they also have a different expectation. Right. They just have expectations to talk or, you know, uh, they don't really thought, think about doing any sort of business meetings. And so we're not going to be prepared and have anything to show them. And so Adam's number one tool is the products. And we need to have this time to show them and share with them and help them experience it. But then it's not a great space to experience that at a cafe or a restaurant. So we invite them to our house to do a one on one, and it was the most effective. And so even if you invite them to your house, And you can do the meeting together with uh, hopefully your sponsors. Could it also be a very effective? And so if you have meetings at like family meetings or school meetings or um, alumni meetings, and we try to share it at those uh, events, And so if we go to these events, uh, we also have to be mindful. We have to be in a situation where we can share with the right uh, words and information. But then we go to this uh, events where it's like a lot of people and you're the only one talking and trying to share these information about Atomy, then it'll be very difficult for you. So don't try to visit those events to try to uh, make them into your consumers. If you want to make them into your consumers, then just go to those events and have a great time. And then you pick out one person or two people that you truly believe that, oh, this person can uh, be interested. Like, oh, they ask them, that, you ask them like, oh, what are they doing? How are they go doing? And they say, oh, you know, my body is having a lot of issues and you figure out their needs. And then you invite them for a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you afterwards. And then you start to t show them about the positive sides of Atomy. And after that, you move to your next friend uh, who is also part of that, and then you invite them, and then you introduce them to this, uh, doing that one-on-one -on -one meeting again and adding that same member underneath your other friend, and you'll start to grow. But if you ignore this process and try to take it all of one time, then you're going to have a very hard time. So now you can go into two to one or three to one meetings. And so you introduce your consumers through to your sponsors. And so those who are new uh, business owners, you need to do this one to one meetings and two to one meetings 
uh, a lot. That's because you don't have a lot of confidence or information about Atomy. So then you might feel hesitant or even feel that, oh, when someone asks you a hard question, then you, you feel that, oh, uh, you're going to feel uh, very depressed from not knowing the answer. And so there can be a lot of issues in terms of finding the needs of this uh, customer. So that's how the sponsor helps you in that aspect. And so in the very beginning, use your sponsor to the best of your abilities, because that's what they're there for. And you have to uh, really brag about your sponsors to them. Then it'll make it so much easier when you're doing this business. So when you do this two to one or three to one meetings, it will help grow your business quickly. Or if you can't utilize this two to one, three to one uh, meetings, then it can be very difficult. And so your progress will become a lot slower because you're only trying to rely on your own uh, strength and not utilizing your sponsor's help and so forth or your team's help. And so if you work together with your sponsor, then you can really utilize their strength and become one team. And so I hope that you guys utilize this two to one or three to one meetings. And so you start to plan, how can I show my people to the sponsor? And so if you can use this, then you can quickly grow your business at an early stage. And so next will be your line meetings. And so here, you consumer starts to become interested in the products and the business. And they want to make a little bit of cash on the side. That's when we do our line meeting. So we meet together with our uh, you know sponsors, right? Our diamond masters or Cheryl's masters, and we do a line meeting together. And so we bring around like five people or 10 people or even more. And so we start from like four uh, to five people uh, and you start in this small meeting in the beginning as a line meeting. If you just add everyone into one big group message and so they might just say that, oh, welcome. But then after receiving about 10, 20 of those messages, they feel overwhelmed and they'll leave. And that's because they're not ready. So start from a small meeting and then build up from there. And so if you do this once a week, uh, continuously, it'll help build upon your business. And so it's good to build uh, connections and trust with that partner. And they'll also be able to understand that, oh, this is one team and that I'm a part of this. And so there's going to be times where you're going to have people who are very far or live in a different area. And so in order to meet them, You need to create a space for them to meet with you, right? So like a, uh, a, a very uh, stable location, right? The one where they can do business talks 
and meet continu continuously, right? Not just the random coffee shops and restaurants here and there. And so if we have a, a location where we can have Atomy products there that we can display and uh, give to or try out for our partners or customers, it can help a lot. And so having a regional area where people can meet, it can be very effective. And so once your line meeting starts to grow, Then you'll have about like a meeting where it's like hundreds of people and many people do Zoom meetings now. And Zoom is another meeting itself and you can utilize this as well since we are a global business, just like how we have our global top seminar, English seminar. And so this line meeting is also very important. And we can earn that kind of synergy effect by having that kind of line meeting. And so next would be our one day seminars and part time seminars. And so in Korea, we have our like Aura Vision Hall or Atomy Park, which is held at least once a week. And this, uh, you can help them attend at least once a week or one day seminars. And so at least once a day, uh, once a week, they would, you'd have a time where you can, uh, go to the seminar together. And so if you're able to do this on a regular basis, continuously, your business will grow. And so one of the big key points of the meetings will be to attend the Success Academy. And so the Success Academy, this is the uh, kind of key point where we meet all together. And so the reason why we do all these live meetings, one-on-one -on -one meetings, is to uh, meet together at this Success Academy And so if you're able to use this well, then your business will grow. And this will be a very good indication of whether your business is growing well or not by seeing how many people from your left and right side are there together at the academy attending. And so inviting to the Success Academy could be easy, but also it could be hard. And so compared to the other jobs you might have done before, it's very easy, I'd say. But the reason why it's hard is that many people are not passionate or they're not prepared in order to invite people. And so you would try to invite them once or twice. And then there are many times people would say that, oh, I'm coming, but they don't come. And then you start to feel uh, depressed. And then there would be times where the, even yourself would give up going to the Success Academy and just go home. And so you need to make it uh, understandable that when you invite people, there is going to be a time where they're going to reject. I rejected five years. But after I was invited and I attended, I was able to quickly become a royal master. And so there's not going to be a time where you're going to invite them and from the very first time they're going to say yes, right? If you believe that's the case, then you should just buy a lottery ticket instead. And so this has a much higher chance of success inviting them, even if they say no the first few times, 
uh, than doing a lottery ticket. The only difference is that there's time. Time is the cost that it'll take to bring them in. As long as this person does not leave your line, then one day they will attend. And so I think that our sponsors and partners uh, have to utilize the Success Academy to the best of our ability. And so don't just attend without any plan, but we need to make a decision. And so it's a time where we can uh, have a time of healing, but also to invite new members and help them as well. And so it's a time of celebration. It's a time where you need to turn off your smartphones and pay attention and have the right attitude with the humble attitude, ready to learn and listen. And so if you show a bad attitude or bad uh, posture, then you're going to have a negative impact to your partners and consumers. And so don't show those negative things to your partners. You need to be making a firm decision, otherwise you will not have the result you want. And so while they're at the Success Academy, make sure you do Dutch pay, so that way you can divide these expenses. and make full use of the break time at the Success Academy. Uh, so where you can have new attendees introduced to the sponsor and also have a photo of your group and team. Or you can even have people uh, prepare, everyone prepares their own food and then share it to promote friendship and teamwork. And what's also important is after it's finished and you don't just leave or just disappear, there's many people who do that, but even after they finish, do a follow-up and say hello to your sponsors, introduce your partners to your sponsors. Even if you have to leave early, then just uh, you know say it to the, your sponsor that, oh, I apologize, I couldn't stay longer, I have to leave early. And so from these new members, your, the sponsors uh, want to overlook and see them and then kind of uh, meet with them after with a follow-up meeting within 48 hours. And so it, you can determine who these are by their attitude and how they see the business. And so just like this, we have these group pictures. And so people say that, oh, why should we take this? I also personally didn't like taking pictures. But those people are those who would never done teamwork business before. While doing a teamwork business, this is a proof to show to other people and by showing them that, oh, here I am. And many people will immediately recognize that, oh, I'm here. And so it's important for us to take these kind of pictures to build teamwork. Imagine you are missing there. In this group picture, is those who is missing are those who didn't attend. And so those who leave early or leave in the middle, then they'll be able to miss out on this important opportunity. And so there's missions that we should do. So the first one is mandatory attendance at the Success Academy. Attending 12 times will help you become an auto sales master. And then attend the line meeting, attend major training, uh, other sponsorship, rec other sponsor recommended meetings, like one day seminars. And so we can check by doing this kind of uh, schedule calendar. And so all the days that you can attend, 
you can uh, let your partner, uh, your sponsor know and that this is my schedule. And so I can attend on this day on Monday as a Zoom meeting. And so this person is a part timer so that I can attend at nighttime on Wednesday for this meeting. And on Friday, I can definitely attend that one day success academy. And on Saturday, I will make it into an automy day. So from morning to night, I'm going to work together with my sponsor to do Atomy. And so it's not doing this business 24 seven, but you do your work on the days that you are assigned and you said that you will do it. And then the rest, you just naturally fill out over time. And so if you're able to do this and do this monthly, every month you have a new schedule, then you can create this online uh, schedule. And so at any day, you set with your sponsor and so the day you just leave out only for atomy and so you have to set those days for yourself and when you're attending zoom meetings it's also important to how you do it so the keeping your screen in a landscape mode wearing office looks uh, leaders may it put mandatory to wear your badge uh, see chat room names And so it's important to do this in advance uh, for those who are new to help them. And so there's people who don't check if they're muted. So they just start talking and they don't know even if we try to reach out to them. So it's very important to help familiarize yourself with how to use the Zoom. And there's also people who don't uh, mute themselves or they also have a lot of ambient noise around themselves. And so it's important for us to uh, have a very clean background sound. And it's also important to not uh, keep our camera uh, closed. Right. If we turn off the camera, then we'll start to slouch, we'll eat, we'll sleep. And so you don't start to become careful while you're in front of uh, the camera when it's turned off. Right. Or you have times where it's like you're showing your nostrils or you're showing the ceiling. Or like something is showing. And so make sure you're not showing those kind of inappropriate or virtual screens, but having clean background and professional. And so also when you're using smartphones, using a stand is essential. And while those who are speaking is essential to use microphones. If you just use your smartphone mic, then there's going to be an echo and there can be a lot of issues as well. And so especially those who speak and have a uh, speaking role, it's not, it's not expensive to buy a cheap mic. And it's also recommended to have a very big screen or a big tablet. If you use a smartphone, it can be very difficult. You can't generate and uh, deliver the right messages. And so refrain from eating or doing other things. And after the Zoom meeting, don't just leave, but say hello and then leave naturally. In a way, if you do that, then you're just shutting the door right in front of them. And just say, oh, good work today. You did a great work. And then just say hello once to your sponsors before you leave. And so there's time where you need to hold inquiries or meetings. 
And so it's really important for us to do regular meetings. And so those who have their own center, you need to uh, have a right schedule to kind of uh, attend for your uh, partners. And so help uh, book scheduled meetings for your partners who work uh, late at uh, or early in the morning and have time only at night. And so kind of have for office workers, maybe 7 p.m. on a Tuesday and a Wednesday, you have a meeting. And so if you're in a big, big meeting, uh, a center, then you might have meetings in different uh, avenues on the same day. And so you might have a, a time where even though you're not a big uh, center, you have all kinds of things from Monday to Friday. Then you have a lot of issues and people will feel confused on where they need to attend. And even though the meetings that they need to attend on a regular basis, they are not going to attend. And so only schedule them uh, the meetings that they need to 100% attend. And the rest, they can just uh, attend on their own if they want to. And so you want to uh, do the speech, then you want to hold it like this. And so especially don't try to pressure your new members uh, for those who are speakers. And so have practices for three minute speeches. Right, because there's people who just talk for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, because they don't know how to measure the three minute speech because they really like speaking. And so it's important to practice. And so those who attend regularly, don't talk about the same thing over and over again. Uh, instead, you could also talk about their experience, their recent activities, or what they did, instead of talking about the same thing for the three-minute speech. And then for a small meeting of around 10 people, have all the members participate in the speech as much as possible. But if you have a large meeting, then make sure that you have a speaker prepared in advance. And don't just uh, invite people randomly during the meetings because there's times where people won't be ready. Then they'll feel burdened to speak. So there's people who aren't going to be ready for the three minute speech. So they're going to talk about the wrong things and give a wrong impression to new speakers or new people. So always have speakers prepared in advance. And this is the, I think, the best method. And so like if you try to invite them to speak, many people will try to like hi and like they'll be shy. And so don't create that kind of environment. You need to create the environment that people want to proactively try to speak. And so during that three to five minute speech, you want to do like this kind of setup. So you, for the thir first 30 seconds, you can introduce your name, your place of uh, where you live, your former or current job, and then you practice that. And then from there, you, you can do a one minute about how you came to know Atomy, and what's good about meeting Atomy and then commitment to your uh, future. And so you kind of build that. And then this is the format that you want to do for the three minute speech. And so you're helping them practice so that they become better. And so by doing this, they can be able to easily share if they have to do a one-on-one -on -one meeting with their customers about why they need to do Atomy and why they do Atomy. And so when you're speaking, there are some things that you need to keep in mind. 
Right? If you're feeling a little bit down, then let your sponsors know that you can't speak that day because you might give a negative impression. And so it's important for us to uh, keep those difficult emotions in check because there's times where we have two different kinds of tears, where tears of sadness and tears of happiness. But those people who are speaking, they start to cry and say like, oh, I'm so depressed today because of all this family situation. And all those people who are listening, they won't feel passionate, but rather feel down. And so if you don't feel that motivated, then a good idea is to uh, listen to our chairman of Hunger Park speaking to kind of up in your mood so that you can be ready. And so also uh, please stop uh, saying any sort of profanities or swearing or slandering or of others or emotional words. And so you should be prepared. And so it's best to prepare in advance. So there's a reason why meetings are so important, right? So we have that meeting uh, highway, and so we go from the starting point to the end the destination. And there's already a road that's set, and you can move in between your lanes from within the highway. Even if you can rest on the side, you still go back on the road. And then eventually, there's going to be a, a realization that you have your own speed. And then you eventually reach that success uh, destination. But those who don't attend any meetings, they ride their own way. And so they think that they're going the right direction. But eventually they start to have doubt. They start to have negative thoughts. And so they leave and then they go their own way and they never reach the destination that they're supposed to reach. And so even though they're supposed to reach the destination that they set, let's say the beach, but instead they enter a forest and they say, oh, where did I go? This is not where I should be. And so they try to enter back, but there's no way to enter. So they have to start all the way back from the beginning. And so there's many things that you wanna do to avoid this. That's why we need to have this system, which is our navigation. And so if you try to do this your way, then you'll have a big problem. And so my way is not a big thought that you have, but just one action that will build on that. Oh, today... I don't want to attend the Success Academy, or maybe I want to attend this meeting today. And that is from that small action will start to lead to the bigger problem. So don't ever exit the system. Because as soon as you start to exit it, your sponsor will try to guide you. But those who have a very stubborn attitude, they won't have any, uh, they'll have a hard time listening to their sponsor and they have to start again. And so I talked about attending meetings, it's important. Now we're gonna talk about building consumers. And so in order to make consumers, you need to make your products into your servants by making them taste it, apply it, and borrow it. And so there's people who just uh, don't really share this products that they have. But in order for you to create your consumers, you need to help them taste it, they need to apply it, and you need to help share them borrow it. Right. And so let's say they, they have a pump, but if they don't understand the taste of the water, they will not try to pump the, the water. 
right? It, all you have to do is just showing that catalog and saying that, oh, this is good, that is good, without showing them and helping them experience the product, then they're not going to understand the value. And so at the very beginning, you need to start to spread the products as many people as possible. And so what kind of products should you spread? You need to spread the products that you have the most uh, emotional impact on, that you felt the most uh, love for that product. And so we go back for, to the step one that we talked about last month, loving the products. Because the products that we love, we naturally want to share it to those around us. We want them to try it. We want them to taste it because we understand the effects it had on us. Even if we don't uh, you know, want to do it, we naturally do it because of how amazing it is. And so we want to deliver it through the effect. And naturally, that will allow us for us to deliver the products because we have a great impression. And so while doing this, you can also do like a monthly survey through the catalog. You can also identify the customer's tendencies and their products of interest. And then you can help them and convert this into data that you can use later on. And so understanding the customer's needs and their tendencies is so important. So you can do this by continuing to deliver small gifts for experiences, things like ramen, the seaweed, mackerel, toilet paper. Then you'll start to see their kind of uh, uh, the way they react to those products. Oh, I use these products and I really enjoyed it. And they'll want to purchase it again. And so there was a news recently that there was a, a silicon uh, in the coffee that we drink today. And so this was found recently, but this could have been something we've been consuming for a long time. And then by naturally sharing this news, we share our Atomy coffee saying that it is much cleaner and free from silicon. And so even if we share foam cleanser, I still give them like one or two ramen. And so I don't give them four. So then I only give them two and then they'll use this ramen and then they were like, oh, they eat the two and they want to order more. Or their children were like, mom, can you order more of this ramen? It tastes so good. And same too with mackerel. I just give them just two and then I get orders later on. And so even when we're uh, sending products out to our customers, we just give them a little bit of sit here and there. And we also uh receive calls from them and like oh received such amazing stuff from you thank you so much even though we ordered this we got extra from you thank you so much and the product that you gave me uh you i ordered last time it was so great can i order that and so the more you spread the more you'll give out uh and give out the more orders you'll get back later on and so you want to arouse that curiosity and interest through this simple exposure. And so create and meet with consumers after making many situations that are on your side. So together with your sponsor, with a two-on-one strategy, you can meet with your uh, consumers or partners. I'd say that always three to one is always 100% will work. So a three to one situation or a two to one situation is always the best situation to meet with your consumer. And so building trust and relationships by hosting through weekly regular product days and home parties can be very effective. 
And so by inviting those people who are close to you, then those people will start to uh, open up and invite their close friends because they have a good uh, kind of uh, exposure from those products you've given them. And having a home shop is also very effective. You know, the products that you really love and that you really love sharing, you can set it up in your own house and you can invite them to show them and display it to them. And that is how you're going to gain interest from, from those people. And so for us, we don't have a TV in our living room, but we have a big table and a lot of products uh, stored on the wall. And so we make them sit in front and, and show the products and the products that we have, we have it stored behind us so that while they're talking to us, they're going to look at all the products behind me and like, oh, what is that? What is these products? And they're going to start to become curious. And I say that, oh, are you curious about anything? And they say, oh, you know that thing behind you? What is that? And then they'll start to gain curiosity. And then I would naturally get this and then start to show it. I didn't even have to talk to them about, oh, have you ever used Atomy? Because humans are naturally curious creatures. And so if we just naturally show it and cause them to be curious, they'll naturally draw attention. And so having a place that we can naturally have a time where they can do the facial mask, where that's our homes, our uh, places to use. And so a great place that utilized this was the Hawaii Top Center. And so you don't just do this business through the pictures on a catalog. You need to have them uh, really use the five senses, trying that, the tasting it, using it. Just like how if we go to a mall, there's places where we can try out the products, right? Like the perfume, we can try it, right? And even those people at the mall, they try to uh, invite you to utilize and use these products to entice you to buying the products. Just by looking at the product, you can't determine that this perfume is going to smell like this. Right? We cannot determine how the foam cleanser is left just through picture alone. We need to help them experience it through the five senses. And so during that time while their facial mask is drying, we can show them a video, we can show them more information about the company, and that is how you generate consumers. And so when you're doing the one-on-one -on -one meetings, make sure you're uh, staying far away from these dream thieves or dream stealers, right? And some of them are the people very close to you, like your parents, your child, your friends, your coworkers. Those are the people who are like, oh, this is an MLM business, you got fooled. But these are like zombies. They just come out of nowhere, even though you were so, uh, uh, so excited, and it's expecting, but they just bite like a zombie and then you feel so depressed because the person you thought was the closest reject you. And then you think that, oh, did I have a bad connection with these people? And you start to have doubt and you lose confidence. And some people even said that, oh, sponsor, I lived a very bad life, but you know, that's not the case. You just met someone who is a dream stealer. And so people, they don't like people who do things that they can't do. And so that's why they're already uh, rejecting you because in their mind, they think that they can never achieve it. So they think that you can't do it either. And so you need to arm yourself with the confidence in anatomy and prepare 
uh, by preventing having a vaccine to these negative people. And so in order to do that, you need to do, spend 100 days of practice with your sponsors, and eventually you'll be gradually able to apply this to your field. And so through proper invitation, after consulting with your sponsor about your lines, then you can start to invite them with the one-on-one -on -one small meetings. Then time to, is automatically going to reorganize your existing human relationships. Right. So the people that you thought that were your best friend, your closest friend, but you are you'll be able to realize that wow, these people never thought of me as true people, and you can kind of reorganize your connections. Those who are truly your friends will help you even when they first start. Because if they're truly your friend, then they're like, oh, can I sign up? How can I help you? What products do I need to buy? Those people who are not your friend, they're going to feel jealous. They're going to think that, oh, this person, you sh you're going to fail. And so there's a person called Chris Gardner. And so Will Smith actually did this movie about the pursuit of happiness. And Chris Gardner was actually the person who was in this film as a story. And so the movie is, is where the... They lived at the very bottom of life with their son, but now this person is someone who is a millionaire. And this is what he told his son, that if you have a dream, you need to protect it. Like, there's going to be people who are going to tell you that you can't achieve it, you can't do it, but you should never trust what they say. And so if you truly believe that this is the direction that you chosen is correct, then you should do all in in that direction. doesn't matter the speed that you're going in. That is the right way. And so if you have chosen Atomy, then do not give up because of those who oppose you and try to steal your dreams. Instead, you go on that path all the way to the end. Because those people never have dreamed of making 50000 a month, 100000 a month. That's why they say all this thing, but don't give up. And that's why Chris Gardner said all this. And so we have here the list of Atomy expected consumers. And so we can kind of rate them A, B, C, D, E. And so on your left line and right line. And so on the A, they're going to be self consumers and they love cash back. And so many people can just start from E and then build up to B uh, and A all the way to the A. And so you can build this together with your sponsors. And so let's say you have no connections or you're people who say that uh, you don't have connections. And so we're not doing this business through the people that we know. And so from all the many thousands of people on my left and right, uh, together with the people I know with my wife, is 50 people. And I saw the percentage, it was around 0.02%. So it's not even 1% of people I know from those people I know are on my list. Everyone in Atomy, we didn't succeed through the people we knew. The people we know is just a percentage, but the majority of the success is driven by the people we don't know. And so the Joe Gerrard's Rule of 250, this is a, a book he wrote, is a world's Guinness Book record, and it sold around 13,000 cars in 15 years and set a record in the Guinness World Book of Records. And so he said that having a kind of crush or receiving favorability on, from one person is the very first step to success. 
And so according to him, about 250 mourners attend the funeral, and the number of guests attending the wedding can be predicted to be around 250 from the grooms and 250 from the bride's side. And so in other words, if you get a favor from one customer, you have secured 250 potential customers. However, if you lose the favor of one customer, you lose 250 potential customers. And so you always put the customer's interest first. And so instead of uh, thinking that, oh, when this person comes to buy a truck, you don't just assume that, oh, they're just going to buy it maybe look at truck but they're not going to buy it but instead you give them the 100 percent service so that way even if they don't buy it today they'll come back to buy a truck and so even though that person didn't buy the truck instead they said oh maybe i can introduce you to someone that wants to buy this truck and that is the power of connection through consumers And so try it out before selling it to a customer because that is the key to success. And naturally, we want to buy it from the people that we like. And so you want to become someone that others like you. And so when you first start, when you start to have trouble finding connections, when you start to feel rejection, then you need to uh, change your mindset. And so there's the type of mind of forcing where people is like, oh, you should listen to me because we're family and we used to be friends for such a long time. And they would try to force their relationship on and make them do that. And then when they reject them, then you'll start to feel hurt. And when you start to feel hurt, then you can't go meet with them again. And so then we feel bad because it was like, oh, you should have listened to me because we're a so-and-so relationship. And like, oh, you don't do that to me then. And you just cut them off. And then that is the mind of a seller and a merchant. And many people have this kind of mindset and that's why they feel rejection and quit. But instead we need to have a mind of persuasion. And so we need to go there already expecting rejection. And then you need to understand why you're getting rejected and try to solve that reason. They're not rejecting you, but they are rejecting Adam because they don't understand. So the center of communication is the other party. And so it needs to be long term and you need to continue to meet them and have a build a mutually beneficial relationship. And so you just say, oh, don't, you don't need to do the business, just use the products for me. And then you start to persuade them to use the products first. And from there, you can naturally meet them continuously, and then you can persuade them. And that's why even for me, I got persuaded after five years. And so don't send them spam messages, but rather a uh, message that is something that they're going to really like to see, just like your Amazon text that you've been delivered. And so are you currently someone helpful to someone or are you a spam to someone? And so are you sharing this business because are you trying to make money off them or are you truly trying to uh, help them? And so you want to go visit them. He's like, oh, I want this person to succeed by doing Atomy together with them. So even if you get rejected, then you won't feel the negative feeling. And so there's five types of reasons for rejection. And so I'll end it off after this.
And so I'll continue off after uh, next week or next month. But today I talked a little bit about attending the meetings and building your consumers. And so this is about after five uh, years, I've been able to gather all the information from the seven cores. And so the steps one and two, which is to love the products and attending the meetings is the biggest core to building your business. And by doing this over and over again and building repetition can help build your confidence so that you can overcome those difficult moments because they give you that confidence and belief. Once you build that, then you'll never feel that kind of uh, depression when you get rejected. And so speed is important, but also your direction is important on the way you uh, head. And so end it off here for today. Thank you all for listening. And so, yes, uh, thank you all for listening. If we can just give another big round of applause for our Royal Master uh, for that amazing uh, speech. This is something he's compiled uh, from all the time he's been working in Atomy and then he built this for uh, his partners and for us, right, to all learn. And so that way we can also progress as fast as he did, right? So there is no uh, gatekeeping in Atomy, right? We are all trying to share what we know so we can all grow together and reach the top together. And so what an amazing example it is uh, as for someone who's already been there and has already reached that level to show us the steps. And so thank you all for joining us. It did go a bit longer. Uh, however, I hope that it was a great time for you and you learned something new today and that you were able to take notes and, you know, uh, kind of help this keep this information so that you can digest it for later. And so we'll end it off with our company motto for today. And then we'll just take a quick picture. Uh, so please stay around for that. And so if you can all um, join me for the company motto. Are you guys ready? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Let's begin. Perish the spirit. Okay. So we just gotta take a quick picture. Uh if you could just put it on a heart. Um, three, one, two, three. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank, thank you so much, much everyone. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Polla. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.